the Phoenix 8 has just arrived and already Garmin themselves have leaked something that would seem rather obvious. The work on the Phoenix 8 Pro is underway. Garmin can't seem to get out of their own way when it comes to poor software development practices. Back in August, they accidentally put live their new satellite subscription plans that were then announced in September. I made a video about that if you care to check it out right here. If you go back a bit further, back at the end of 2021, they also put images of their not yet released Venue 2 Plus on their website for a short time. And in 2022, they published an image of the Instant Crossover before that watch launched as well. So this is not the first time Garmin has done this and it's not entirely surprising that someone accidentally put the Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro listed as a device to activate in the Connect IQ app for a short period of time. You can see that there is no image associated with it, it's just a generic placeholder. So the important question is, what does this mean? Is the Phoenix 8 Pro around the corner? Should you hold out to get that instead of the Phoenix 8? Look, I'm very confident in saying there's just no chance the Phoenix 8 Pro is coming anytime soon. Garmin has historically been on a 14 to 18 month release schedule between models. So the 8 Pro would come at my earliest estimation next September, but realistically probably November end of the year, which would be extremely soon even in that range. So if you are considering a Phoenix 8, and if you are, be sure to watch my three week review right here. But if you are considering one, you can safely cross off the 8 Pro as an option to wait for if you want something within the next calendar year. This is just Garmin being Garmin. Proper software management does not seem to be their strong suit. But there is something even more interesting about this Connect IQ leak. There is a mention of a brand new Phoenix variant. That is the Phoenix 8 Micro LED. Now this actually seems cool. So Micro LED, as the name would suggest, uses microscopic LEDs to light Small a display. Compared to an OLED display, Micro LED is brighter, suggests, has a longer lifespan, has light. better energy efficiency, and also and doesn't suffer from burning. But, and there always is a but with new technology, it's more like. complex it's and expensive to manufacture. So after doing some cyber sleuthing, I found that Apple has been on the hunt for micro LED for quite a while, going all the way back to 2014 when they acquired Luxview, who's a pioneer in micro LED technology. The idea would be to replace the display in Apple watches with micro LED and eventually their iPhone or iPad displays when possible. There is anticipation that Apple will finally have the technology ready for market in 2025 version of the Apple Watch Ultra, but after a decade of trying, there have been reports of delays with the commercial launch in the 2026 model, then the 2027 model, and apparently Apple has now pulled the plug on their micro LED hopes back in May of this year. They are shifting focus back to OLED. Samsung, who are a leader in display technology, are reportedly still looking to come out with a micro LED driven watch next year, but Apple's recent cancellation may influence them to think otherwise. So that means to this date, no one has been able to get to market with a micro LED display due to the expense of manufacturing. A micro LED display was to cost Apple $150 per display, which is four times the current cost of their LTPO AMOLED displays. The efficiency gains from this new technology? Well, I won't get too technical and out of my depth explaining this, but apparently, even at double the actual efficiency of the display, there are other components that cause battery drain as well, so a doubly efficient micro LED display would only translate to a paltry 10 to 30% efficiency gain in battery life. So is micro LED something that Garmin is just experimenting with? If so, why would there even be a placeholder in the Connect IQ app for it? Are they just ready to go to market with an even more expensive display? If the most valuable company in the world has not yet been able to work out a way to make the technology available at an acceptable profit margin, I shudder to think about what Garmin would charge for a watch that has this technology built in. I think that Garmin has the ultra high-end sports watch segment pretty much cornered. 
Even Apple mostly shies away from ultra premium pricing with their Ultra Watch, coming in at $800 compared to Phoenix 8 at $1,000. Tactics from $1,100 to over $1,400, and the Mark series going all the way up to an eye-watering $3,200. You can see that Garmin does not shy away from premium materials and charging a matching premium price. So on the one hand, it is good to see Garmin developing with new technologies if that means there can eventually be a trickle-down effect, making this better display technology find its way to their more affordable sports watches in the future. But on the other hand, is Garmin going too far by putting focus on the ultra premium segment for technological pieces that will ultimately be outdated in the next five years? Do you see anyone walking around with an 18K gold Apple Watch 1 these days? That watch surpassed even Garmin's loftiest dreams at a $10,000 starting MSRP and is now almost certainly e-waste. So yeah, Garmin is obviously working on the Phoenix 8 Pro. That's expected. They've had the mid-gen bump in the Phoenix series since going back to the Phoenix 3 in 2016. Micro LED is a very cool new technology, but if it has taken Apple the better part of a decade to only lead to their failure and withdrawal from manufacturing, I would assume if Garmin is going to adopt the technology in a future model, it will very likely continue to push the high end of Garmin pricing. So what do you think? Is it worth pushing the technological boundaries of the display on these watches, or should the focus be on refining the existing sports functions, improving health tracking by working with wearable health sensors, and maybe adding some LTE back in or some satellite communication functionality? I'm interested to hear your thoughts, and if you made it to the end, thanks for sticking around. Throw a thumb if you enjoyed the video and consider a sub for more fitness focused gear content like this. And if you are considering a Phoenix 8, then be sure to check out this video where I give an overview of the model, a comparison to past Phoenix and Epix models, and give my honest opinion on the watch after using it for three weeks now. I'm Dave and this is Dave Does Fitness. Have an awesome day and stay fit.